we can turn that decline into an approval. And it could have been something just as easy as they put in a monthly income instead of an annual and we need a you know, certain amount of income. So putting it in correctly, sometimes it's user error, sometimes it's just getting creative, sometimes it's just adding a different co-borrower. You know, we have a lot of different things that we can suggest and hopefully be helpful to be able to turn it around and get them approved. And I, I would say easily 20, maybe even 30 percent of the time we can do that. Chad Peterman here, and you are listening to Can't Stop the Growth, a platform for leaders and teams to grow and thrive. We highlight the importance of personal development, pursuing greatness, and always chasing your potential. Let's get into it. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Can't Stop the Growth. I'm your host, Chad Peterman, and today we have a very special guest and friend of mine, that is going to help educate us all on some important things we in the home service industry should be thinking about as we roll into 2024. If there are things that you're not paying attention to, if there are areas of your business that it can improve, I will assure you that our guest today can give you some tools that are going to help you navigate what could be And what most are saying is a tough 2024. So without any further ado, today I would like to welcome from Good Leap, Gail Tripp. Welcome to the show, Gail. Thank you. Thank you very much, first of all, for just allowing me the opportunity to come on and do this. This is very exciting, Chad. We've known each other now almost coming up on two years. Time flies. I'm telling you, it really does. It feels like I was just out there January like I said, two years ago, and it was 11 degrees. Yeah. So I remember that vividly. (laughs) Absolutely. So some exciting news. There's more that we'll get into as to kind of our partnership on Can't Stop the Growth with Good Leap. We'll get into that towards the back end of the conversation. But first, really just want to kind of get your background, Gail. I know you've spent a ton of time in the consumer financing kind of space and have done a number of different things. So why don't you give the listeners a little bit of background so they know a little bit more about you, and then we'll kind of dive into what we're going to talk about today and hopefully help out our listeners. Yeah. So I moved to California, I guess it's coming up all 15, 16 years ago. I had lived in a few different states, but we moved here and that was in 08 when the crash happened and all of that fun. And that was right when we moved to California. So I decided since jobs were scarce and it was just a hard time, I ended up getting my notary license and opened up my own notary business and then did that for about six or seven years. Had a very chance encounter doing a, a, a refi signing with a guy that was with one of the financing companies here in California called Pace Financing. It's a type of financing specific here on the West Coast and in Florida. And it was literally just by chance that I ended up at this company called White Green, now about 10 years ago, and got into this through that chance meeting and just completely fell in love with it because, you know, I had a business background and business management and run some different companies, but I'd never really truly been in the financing arena. So Pace was like really diving into it. It's probably one of the most complex financing tools out there. And so got to be really good at that. I was there for several years. Then one of my contractors convinced me to leave financing for a few years and go and sell solar and home improvements. So I did that and determined that that's a hard job. (laughs) People don't really understand how hard it is to convince somebody to to give you 30, 40, 50,000 dollars to go out and add solar or I was doing roofs and actually some HVAC. So the cool thing for me was it gave me the option to see or, or the experience rather to see what it's like to be on that side of the table when you're trying to convince someone and trying to sell them something. So I did that for a couple of years. And then the same guy that got me into wiring called me up and there was another pace company. He convinced me to get back into that. So I did that for a few more years until Good Leap came calling, coming up almost three years ago now to start up this home improvement division. There were six of us when we first started it out. You know, Good Leap's been in solar financing and they, we've got a full service mortgage company. So as a company, we've been around for 20 years. But about three and a half years ago, they decided to get into the home improvement space. So when They got about six of us together to to open this up after Eric and Leandra got it going. Now we're at like 70 something people. It's pretty crazy how in just a matter of two years, we've really exploded. So, you know, for me, having that background of understanding truly how to to use financing as a soft close and help you use that to further your business and then 
being in the shoes of what it's like to be a contractor, I feel like those two pieces have allowed me to really understand the sense of urgency when a contractor calls me and they're at the kitchen table with that customer. I know what it's like. I feel that anxiety, like for the next hour, I can't answer my phone. If it rings, there's that anxiety that, oh, I need to be helping somebody out there. That's kind of how I got into this. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you providing that background. And obviously today at Good Leap, you are one of our, I like to call them kind of premium partners and kind of how we operate. And, and really what I want the listeners to understand is the power and importance of consumer financing. And then some of the differences between Good Leap and others. And then also, I think together we can shed some light on how to use financing. I think so many contractors, so many people in the home service space that I talk to have such a negative connotation about financing and they don't use it as a tool. They use it as a fallback and they don't really ever understand the power of it. So I guess maybe educate us a little bit on how Good Leap is different, how they try to position themselves within the, you know, as you primarily work in the home services space. What's that look like? I would say probably first and foremost is the level of customer service that we do bring to the table. When I'm talking to other contractors out there and they're switching over to us from different lenders, the one biggest complaint I hear is, you know, I feel like I never have anybody to call if I have issues or problems. And, you know, when you're out there at the kitchen table and you need help right then, it's imperative that you have a human to talk to. So I think that level of customer service, you may have heard me say this before, my guys all know it. I mean, the only time I'm not going to answer my phone is if I'm dead or I'm asleep. So (laughs) pretty much it's going to be all the time my phone's on, regardless. Because furnaces don't know that it's Christmas Day if the furnace goes out or if there's a store problem and it's right in the middle of a major holiday or Sunday afternoon during football, you definitely need help from your customer needs help. So I'm going to probably say the number one thing is our level of customer service and attention to detail and truly understanding that we don't feel like we're a vendor for you. We feel like you're our partner. And I really feel like that's why this has been so successful for us the last two years is we both feel that way. I really feel like you guys are friends and partners of ours more so than just I'm your finance person. Yeah. And I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, there's a number of different financing companies out there. I'm sure those of you that are in the HVAC space, you know, your your equipment suppliers and everything is recommended you do this and do that and all of these things. And hopefully we can shed some light on kind of our strategy with financing here and then how you guys really come into play. I think the customer service piece is one of the most important. Tell us a little bit more. I know how often you're communicating with our comfort advisors and and different people out there in the field. Give us kind of a rundown of what you aim to do. What do those conversations look like and how are you helping the people out there in the field? Yeah, I mean, basically when I get a call from anyone at Peterman, you know, lots of times, Let's say that they submitted an application and there was an issue with it or maybe got declined. There are lots of things that we can do to turn that decline around and work with the comfort advisor while they're at the table real time with that customer to turn that into a path to success and a path to approval. So that's a big part of, you know, the actual daily conversations, you know, was there a client or, you know, sometimes there's daily conversations with trying to get contracts clear because every now and then we have to upload some of those if it's a larger deal. And then definitely trying to make sure that we get you guys paid as quickly as possible because at the end of the day, you know, as a contractor, not only just getting that deal approved and getting it scheduled and installed, but you guys want to get funded as quickly as possible. So anytime there's any kind of a hiccup or any kind of an issue or something needs to be cleared in order to make sure funding gets done, all of those things basically just to get to a pants to success a path to approval just to get you guys to be able to close more deals. A lot of what you're doing needs to be installed same day or next day because these are luxury items like, you know, or aesthetic items. These are critical need items. You know, if it's 30 degrees and their heat's out, they need heat that day. So it's doing whatever we can do on our end to make sure that you can fulfill your mission and help your customer in real time as quickly as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't think obviously you're not going to say it, but I'm going to say it for you, is that all of our comfort advisors have your phone number in their phone and they are using it multiple times every week to get deals done. I don't know that we track how many Gale deals we've got over the finish line, but talking to our sales staff, like it's a lot. And if you as a home service provider are thinking about, well, 
financing, no one wants to do that, or like the payments are high or whatever it is, like to me, having you there and your team there to support our people out in the field, because yeah, a lot of times you're submitting an application and it seems like it just goes into the ether, right? Like, uh, we'll just wait and see if it comes back. Well, what we've been able to do and with our partnership that I think is so important and so critical to our success with the Goodly platform is being able to call somebody in real time and say, hey, they got declined. Is there anything that we can do? Or, hey, it doesn't seem to be it's coming across. How can we help this customer? And I think together we've been able to help a ton more customers than would have otherwise been helped. I would easily go out and say 20 to 30 percent of the time we can turn that decline into an approval. And it could have been something just as easy as they put in a, a monthly income instead of an annual and we need a you know, certain amount of income. So putting it in correctly, sometimes it's user error. Sometimes it's just getting creative. Sometimes it's, it's just adding a different co-borrower. You know, we have a lot of different things that we can suggest and hopefully be helpful to be able to turn it around and get them approved. And I, I would say easily 20, maybe even 30 percent of the time we can do that. So that means that you didn't waste a lead to get that person out there in front of that customer. You were able to close that deal. And then, you know, like I said, get it scheduled and installed in the next day or two or three. And then everybody wants. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, too, is. The biggest piece is finding a financing partner. There's a number of different types of financing and vendors and all of these things only to settle on Good Leap. And there's a reason that we've been with you for two years and plan to be with you for a long time into the future is a lot of people, when I hear they're like, well, what are their credit approval ratings? And all of these things, all of these factors that at the end of the day, you guys want to approve what you can and feel safe with it. And a lot of the time, I think we're focused on all the wrong things. Like if they didn't get approved, they're probably not going to get approved through anybody. So let's save the deals that we or they're close or whatever it may be. And then we can push those to the finish line. So I think that's important out there and really finding a partner who's going to be there to help you get the thing, not just offer a product. It's more so that support on the other side that I think is extremely important. One of the things I'd like to ask you about, because obviously you work with a ton of customer facing comfort advisors or salespeople or whatever they're selling. And then you're also working with kind of the companies and different stuff like that. What are you seeing as far as trends or changes within the industry that listeners should be thinking about as we go into 2024 and as it relates to maybe financing and using that as a tool? You know, I would have to say one trend because, you know, again, over the last decade that I've been doing this would be how this rise of social media has really impacted our industry. And I think in an extremely positive way, because I feel like the types of things like what we're doing right now, it really kind of helps to level the playing field a little bit. You know, this trend of larger companies like yourself opening up your doors in these companies that really want to emulate your success and how you've gotten there and you're giving them the roadmap, which I think is just incredibly cool and generous. And so I feel like just how social media has, you know, from like the Service Avenger site that you're on it and all of the different things that people now have access to, to get out there and get to that level of success faster. And, you know, it's like not have to invent the wheel every single time. I think that that's been one really positive trend that I've seen over the last 10 years. I mean, I certainly never envisioned I'd be sitting here doing a podcast with you. So, I mean, you know, it's just very cool how social media now is so much more you know, a norm for us than it was 10 years ago and how I really feel like it's helped the industry grow, which I think is pretty exciting. Then probably not so positive a thing as far as like real time, you know, what's going on right now in the economy and a trend that I think, you know, definitely owners and employers need to be aware of this People are struggling right now. We've had a rough few years. We're all, you know, none of us need to be told the story. I mean, you, we went through COVID, we went through supply chain shortages, you know, inflation really hit like a brick wall. A lot of people right now are truly having to make hard decisions between medicine and food and things because, you know, you go to the grocery store, you literally get half of what you got a year ago for the same amount of money. And that's impacting people's debt loads, which is impacting their credit score. So, all of those things combined mean people don't really have, although we probably didn't have a ton of reserves to fall back on to begin with, but now they really don't. So when they're in a situation where they desperately need to get heat or their plumbing has failed or their sewers backed up, 
sometimes financing is going to be the only way they're going to be able to do it. So understanding that financing now isn't an option in the age that we live in. It truly is critical and it's imperative. If as a company you want to survive, you definitely need to be offering financing. And even if your customers don't ask for it, sometimes the people that need it the most aren't going to ask for it. But you're going to be doing your customers a huge solid by offering them options early and often and making sure they understand that, yes, we do have really great payment options available for you because you've heard me use this analogy many times in the past and I use it a lot, but it's, I think it's so true. All of us, when we went in to buy a car in the 80s, you know, the 70s, nobody really used financing to get cars because they weren't that expensive. But a lot of the products and services that are offered now, especially in the HVAC world, they're not cheap. And so people now go in when they buy a car, not to spend $10,000 in cash, but they go in knowing what that monthly payment is that they can afford. And, and it shifted and absolutely has, but you know, there's still a lot of companies out there that don't think financing is important, but they need to understand that people get sticker shock really easily and they don't understand that a system is going to be 12, 15, $17,000 telling them that they can get the services and that replacement that they need for, you know, less than 200 bucks is a much easier sell than telling somebody they got to come out of pocket with $17,000, $18,000. So just understanding the climate we're in, you know, hopefully next year it's going to turn around a little bit, but, you know, the Fed increased rates on us more this past year than ever in our lifetime. And that's impacted everything from mortgages to cars to anything we all go out and buy. And, you know, people are now just struggling a little bit more. So you can really help your customers out by giving them these options for financing. Yeah, so many great insights there that I think we can all learn from. I think that the one thing that you said that was critical at the beginning is not shying away from financing because you as a business owner wouldn't use financing. Well, that's great, but you're not oftentimes selling to you. You're selling to a homeowner who, yeah, doesn't probably have 15 grand laying around. And if you think about it, they weren't expecting to spend that 15 grand on a new sewer that they didn't even know was there or a HVAC system that they thought was in good working order and now is being told, hey, this thing's on its last leg. And so I think really from a presentation piece, and, and you've been instrumental in kind of a training that we do and, and all of that, is that if we think about it, outside of a house and a car is probably one of the more expensive things that you in your adult life are going to buy. So if you buy a car and very few people buy a house all cash or a car all cash, they're looking at what's my payment and how do I fit that in? I don't care what your income level is. That's what you're looking at. And it's really taking that stigma away from financing means you can't afford it to that all of our customers use financing. This is just how you buy things, really conditioning your customer there. One of the stats that I know, and you may know it actually better than I, is we finance in our business, we'll finance, I think it's a little over 80% of all new installs have some sort of financing attached to them. And the reason is, is not because no one in our service area can afford anything. It's because we use financing as a tool. So rather than a last resort. And so I think it's really shifting that conversation to financing upfront. And, you know, all of our salespeople, they don't present, they present monthly payments. But why you have excelled in it. I mean, I think of where you guys were at two years ago to where you're at now. It's that mentality and that philosophy of driving it and understanding how to use financing as a soft close. And you guys do it fabulously. You really do. Absolutely. I mean, I've joked sometimes that we're essentially a financing company that essentially puts in furnaces and air conditioners because that's really what we are. In order to get these jobs over the line, you talk about increasing average tickets and close rates. Well, this is the way to do it. It's a heck of a lot easier to move someone from $150 a month to $180 a month as opposed to 15 grand to 18 grand. It's a whole lot bigger gas. Literally was just about to say, and not only is it going to help you get the deal, but it can help you upset. That's the beautiful thing when somebody not even sure if they're going to get approved and then boom, they get approved for 45,000. They're like, not only am I going to get what I need now I have with that really low monthly payment and just paying a, maybe 20 bucks more a month. Now I can get what I want. And that helps everybody. That's a win for Peterman and that's a win for the consumer. Yep. 100%. You nailed it right there is, you know, we all talk about adding IAQ to systems and different stuff like that. Well, 
how much easier of a sell is it is, hey, I can get you an entire IAQ package that will take care of all of that for an extra $8 a month. How's that sound? So I think there's a ton of stuff here as far as the financing world goes. And obviously we'll be talking a ton about this as we move into next year, how to use it as a tool and what to do. Talk a little bit about, because I always find this interesting, you know, our most popular loan, I think is a 12.15 year. year 12.99. Yeah, exactly. And so many people are afraid of interest. Like no one wants to pay interest. Well, like if they put it on their credit card, what's their interest? I read an article earlier this year that credit card interest payments are at an all time high for what you're paying. So you're offering them something that's half of what they would normally get. Tell me a little bit about some of the contractors you use. You know, obviously, you know our business really well, like maybe some of the other ones that were a little bit hesitant to get on. What were those things that you were able to help make click that they were pushing back against? And then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I see it from a different perspective. Here we go. Yeah. Going back to the credit card situation. So think about this scenario. You're in a home that somebody desperately needs. Yeah, they don't have heat and they don't have money in the bank. So their first response is going to be in their head. Well, I guess I have to put it on a credit card. And you're right. Most people have stellar credit. Even the credit cards that you can get with in the 800 plus range, you're still going to be paying anywhere from 18 to 22% interest on that credit card. So if somebody's pulling out a credit card, that usually means that's their last resort. They don't really have any other option to pay for some big unexpected expense other than a credit card. So if you can be their knight in shining armor and, and roll in with, listen, we do accept credit cards, but I can really help you save some money because are you going to be paying their credit card off in the next 30, 60 days? Well, no, that's why they pulled out a credit card, right? So if you can get them in a 15-year loan, at twelve nine nine, that's way more than any credit card that's out there right now. So you're really doing that customer solid by helping them save money in the short term and really in the long term because they're not going to be able to pay that off. And then the other side of that that I think is real critical, a lot of people don't understand, that credit card is their emergency fund. So if they're going to max out their credit card on having to replace their plumbing, their sewer, their heat, whatever, for the next catastrophe that's right around the corner, they're going to be stuck. So you're really helping them out by giving them another finance or another pot of money basically to bring to the table to allow them to use that. I think people that think that they can just survive in this industry on check, cash, and credit card, they've just completely missed the boat. And they're not helping their customers because at the end of the day, you can really help out your customers to help them get these very vital services that they need and help them continue to make the other payments that come up in their life and you know, have the funds to do that. So, Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think you hit the nail on the head as it relates to helping the customer. And obviously, we all want to do everything we can to make sure that the customer is well taken care of. They can get the solutions that they need for their house. I think the one thing that I would like you to talk about a little bit too is when I talk about our most popular loan, what I'd like to talk about is, and this is something we found with Good Leap that I think has really revolutionized our business, is dealer fees. So a lot of your equipment vendors are going to say they got some rock solid deal with A, B, C, or D financing company, and it's only going to cost you as a dealer 15% of the sale. I would assume that most people out there, you're lucky to make 15%. The financing company makes more than you did on the actual deal. Tell me a little bit about, or kind of educate our listeners on kind of the dealer fee structure, and then maybe relate that to what we use and why we use it. And I can provide a little color on that as well. Yeah. So by far, the most popular loan that you guys take advantage of is that 15-year term for the customer and a 12.99 interest rate. And that's a totally free loan doesn't cost you a dime for you guys to utilize that and offer it to your customer. And the beautiful thing is we always say, you know, some people and interest rates have risen. You know, we talked about just a few minutes ago, that's risen almost a dozen times more than ever in our lifetime. 1299 might seem like a, a high interest rate, but again, compared to credit cards, it's quite a bit less. So with it being a 15 year term, you know, stretching it out over that 15 years gives them the lowest monthly payment that's required. They can always chunk it down or pay more if they want to. And the beautiful thing with our loans is there's no dealer fee, no prepayment penalty fee if they want to pay it off early. 
And nobody, honestly, is probably going to go 15 years on an HVAC loan. More than likely, they're going to pay it off in the three to five year range. But with giving them that 15 year lowest monthly payment possible, you're not putting them in jeopardy of not being able to make that payment. Yeah. So we have other loans too that have extremely modest or very reasonable dealer fees. We have that six month, same as cash loan, no interest, no payment that has a very modest dealer fee. And, and that basically can really give you an edge up for those cash buyers. You know, there's a lot of people out there that do have cash, but here's a scenario that's very common. If you go in there and you offer them six months in cash and so they can hold on to their cash between now and the, they get their tax return next year where we're at the cycle versus a competitor that comes in and might even be a little bit lower than you, but they got to come out with 18,000 out of pocket right away. Who do you think that customer is going to go with? So you can truly use financing to win out over your competitors, again, by helping your consumer hang on to their money. And it doesn't cost you as a contractor, you know, you do an average blended cost when most of the loans that you're getting are free. I mean, you're not getting, if somebody pays you with a credit card, that's not free. There's a cost for you to do that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll provide a little color on this because this was something I learned just in my time. You know, I was probably call it before we met Goodleap, it was, you know, hey, how do we offer the longest term with no interest and all of these things? And what we saw, and this is a free nugget for listeners, if you want to improve your numbers next year immediately, is we were running an HVAC install, we were running about 8% of total sales was financing fees. And we've been able to utilizing this loan with no dealer fees, our financing fees are under 2% and we finance 83% of everything we put in. So almost everything is financed and our dealer fees are under 2%. Now, what does that mean for you as a listener? Well, what that means is your gross profit just went up considerably and that was the way that we were able to do it. Now, you can't position this type of loan at the very end after they've already said, oh my God, I can't afford $12,000. And then you offer it to them. We work a lot on the front end of teaching our people how to identify what type of customer. We're not afraid to come out and say, hey, the majority, which is true, the majority of our customers utilize financing options. Would you consider yourself in that camp or are you more a cash buyer? And they'll tell you flat out, no, no, I'm a cash buyer. I, I'm going to pay cash for everything. That's my dad. He does that. But the majority of buyers are looking to fit something into their budget. And you've hit it perfectly is a lot of times right now, our sales pitch on buying something is, hey, we can get you in this a really low monthly payment. You can spend your money, use your credit card for Christmas, all of those things that are coming up that are way more important than your HVAC system. And then you can pay it off whenever you want. So if you get your tax return back, if you get all of these things that are coming around the corner, well, then you can use that money to pay this down. And all of a sudden, you still have that low monthly payment if you want, but you can kind of chunk it down as you go. And so I think that's critical because oftentimes, if you don't use financing, you just go with what your equipment manufacturer said. What I would tell you is, I love our equipment manufacturers. Do not listen to them when they are giving you advice on consumer financing. The only reason they're giving advice is because they've cut a deal with some person to give you some rate that's still astronomically high. So just don't do that. It's silly. I learned the same lesson. So don't think that you're silly. It's just they've set you up in a program that's just not great. Whereas here, what we found is one, a partner that supports us and two, plans that work for the contractor and they work for the customer. And if they work for both of us, then we've got a good situation. It can't work for just one side or the other. And I think it's just brilliant the way you guys have structured it. Because like you said, at the end of the day, you've just added money to your bottom line, new financing for it to become a profit center for you guys. You got it. And, you know, HVAC installs about 60 to 65% of our total business. So like we have to have a solution there if that's going to continue to be a big part of our business. So all exciting stuff on the financing front. I think that it, it, I can't say it enough of how critical of a partner you you guys have been, you know, you specifically, obviously, in helping our guys understand financing, teach it. I mean, that is a, almost a full day course here before you ever go out into the field, you're learning about financing. And there's just so many opportunities to position yourself in a place to help more and more customers out there. What I want to get into now is a really exciting thing. So obviously, Goodleap has graciously agreed to be one of our partners on the podcast moving forward. And, and hopefully, 
continue to provide insight into this financing piece. We've talked about some other things that we may be doing in the future where we can kind of have kind of a open forum of ask all your financing questions. We want to be here to help and different things like that where we can provide value for the listeners. I guess maybe to kind of let the listeners in on what about partnering with the podcast was intriguing to you and your team. Why did you guys decide to come on board and provide value together? Yeah, I I think for one, because we have had such an incredible run for two years and this level of success. I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years and I say it all the time. This has been one of the most really rewarding partnerships that I have been involved with. And being able to see how you guys have really, truly grown your business and your company from what, three, 400 people, I think when I met you, to, I mean, I don't even know exactly where you're at now, but I know over 600. Yeah. You doubled the size of your company in two years. That's incredible. And so by using this platform and being able to do these podcasts and stuff, I think just being able to get the word out because I feel like a big part of your mission and your company's mission is helping other companies. I mean, I've seen it firsthand. And so, you know, this is one of those applications that people should be doing it, but there's still a lot of smaller companies that are scared of it for whatever reason. You mentioned the word stigma earlier. They think it's going to be too complicated or it's going to kill the cell or it's going to be too expensive. And then when they finally understand just how truly easy and helpful and imperative and it's for them to be using financing and they get on board. But you're such a leader in the industry, Chad, and it's been such a privilege not only to work with you, but also everyone in your company. And so being able to align with you and get that message out to people so that we can help other companies grow and follow that roadmap that you put out there. I mean, that for me is what's super exciting. I mean, my why is I'm very fortunate. I love my job. I really do. And I love the fact that I offer service that I can get up every day and I know I can help someone. I mean, I can help your consumer get those things that they absolutely desperately need. I can help your guys provide for their families by closing more deals. I can help you grow your company. Yeah, I can help Goodly grow. And, you know, that's an incredible, rewarding position to be in. I love what I do. And being able to have a platform to share that and to get more people on board and to help more people open their eyes to seeing how truly financing can grow your business. It's not just a cliche. You guys have proven it. You've got actual numbers and stats. And so being able to get that message out there, I think is pretty empowering. It's pretty exciting. That's fantastic. And, you know, we've got a number of great partners. And I think to your point that the big push with partnering with people like yourself and organizations like you is to do just that. It's to provide tactical information that like you can take from this podcast and you can go put it into your business tomorrow and it's going to help. Now, what I will tell you is that if you just take this at face value and you try to implement it, there's a lot of things that are kind of behind the scenes. And to me, that's what we want to kind of, you know, pull the curtain back on is all of these things in which I think we've done a great job early on or throughout this podcast of really kind of debunking some of these myths and different things that people have with consumer financing and really unveil, hey, here's someone that you can go to and help. And there again, there's others out there for sure. We've just created a relationship with you that has been really rewarding. And so as you look at potential partners, it's really not only the financing, you've got to have the partner in the middle that can facilitate how are we using this product? If you've got a negative kind of stereotype about consumer financing, what I would guess is that a lot of it is around your understanding of consumer behavior and what they're thinking and all of that. And guess what? That's perfectly fine because a lot of people that are in the home services trade came from a truck, came from the field. That's not something that you, you know, me even like understanding consumer behavior. I'm like, what is that? What do you mean consumer behavior? Like we sell furnaces. What are you talking about? But it's really taking a deeper dive. And I think you guys have really uncovered a lot of things in that realm that can really help move companies forward. You know, you guys truly are a growth partner. And you're right. I mean, we could not have grown like we have without consumer financing. A world where that doesn't exist doesn't even like I'd have to cut my budget in half next year if you said you can no longer use consumer financing. Not an option anymore. In the world that we live in, it's required. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, you know, we've seen a couple of maybe two or three interest rate hikes. And the one thing that I always come out of the, you know, the one thing we get interest rates, the rates are going up, this, that, and the other. But as you've pointed out a couple of times, they're still about half of what your credit card is. 
So they're still good. They're still really good and a lot better than you're going to find out there. Absolutely. And then try to get a whole construction loan. See how long that takes yep. <laughs> from your bank. You I mean, it. a lot of people are like, oh, I'll just go get a construction loan. Good luck with that because that's probably one of the hardest loans out there to get your hands on. And then when you do finally go through the 60, 90 days of red tape to get one, look at the interest rate you're going to be sitting on. So, and at that point, you haven't had meat for three months. Yep. You know, <laughs> the other thing too that I, is just really cool about being able to offer this is just how easy it is. I mean, you know, a lot of people want to think it's complicated. It's going to kill the deal. Nope. You can literally submit an app and get that green light to install five to seven minutes. Do you have five to seven minutes to sit there and not lose your deal? You know? 100%. Super easy. I mean, we've got an app. All of us are now very accustomed to using apps. We do it on a daily basis. It really is a very simple, easy process. Absolutely. And I think that's a point not to overlook too, because one of the other pushbacks that I get is it's too difficult. You got to fill out all these forms. How am I going to do this? I can't this, that, or the other. Maybe tell us a little bit about how easy Good Leaps platform is. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it, you literally go to the app store, you download the app, you know, you can have one or two people on the loan. Let's just say you've got both people on the loan. It maybe takes three to four minutes to put in the information necessary. Real basic stuff, name, address, phone number, birthday, you know, income, you know, real easy stuff. Same three and a half, four minutes, you've got the entire application filled out on your tablet. Everything's done online. So there's no paper whatsoever. And you're going to get a decision on that application, usually in four to five seconds. So you're going to know immediately, were they approved? Were they not approved? If they were approved, how much were they approved for? So you're going to exactly know what that budget is for that customer. And then if for some reason they got declined, you give me a call or someone at Goodleap and we see if there's possibly something we can do to turn that decline into approval. So the entire process is incredibly simple. Even on our app, we have a training demo site where you can go as a brand new employee we don't ever want somebody running an app for the first time in front of a customer. So we've got a really great demo. Takes you about five minutes. Again, work five minutes of your time. If you're a comfort advisor to go out and use this to close deals, just use that training, that demo center. Get really confident with how easy it is to submit an app. So when you're in front of that customer, you know, you've got the credibility and it's like, yeah, we're going to run this for you. We're going to get you approved and hopefully get the scheduled and installed tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. You alluded to it a little bit and I know what you're talking about, but I want listeners to be clear on this. Tell me a little bit about how Good Leap approves people. And I'm talking more so on like, it's not an exact job amount. It is, I'll let you take it from there. One thing that really makes us stand out, you know, we started this off with what, what makes this different? Well, I think, you know, we talked about customer service, obviously, but the way that we underwrite these loans truly does make this different. So what we're doing is we are pulling all three credit bureaus for that person on the application. So if you've only got one person on the law, we're going to look at all three credit bureaus. We're going to take that highest FICO score. Most companies out there are either just going to pull from one bureau or if they do pull from all three, they're going to take that middle score to make that decision. So you've just increased your odds by you know pulling that highest FICO. And if you add a second person on the loan, you just doubled your odds to get approved because now we're going to take the highest of six scores instead of the highest of three. So that's one of the reasons why our approvals right now are 20 to 30 percent higher than most other lenders in the space, simply because of just how we go out and underwrite. And then we really have some very generous guidelines on debt to income because there's two reasons typically why people don't get approved for financing. It's going to be they don't have a high enough credit score or their DTI or their debt to income ratio is just too, you know, they've got too much debt. So we've got some really generous guidelines for DTI. I mean, if you've got at least one of those credit scores that we pull is over 700 and the deal's under 25,000, which is the majority of what you guys sell. I mean, the average ticket is going to be under 25,000 typically. We don't even look at DTI. So that's one less hurdle for that person to have to get over to get financing. So, you know, we don't do risk-based financing. When Ben started raising interest rate at an unprecedented level, a lot of companies had to kind of pivot and do risk-based financing decisions. We didn't have to do that. We never changed our underwriting guidelines throughout all of these interest rate upticks. So, you know, we still on our counter offer second look level, we can still buy down to a 600 FICO 
a lot of companies aren't doing that. And then the other thing I think that's really important along with the credit scores and the approval rating is the fact that we don't do partial approvals. This is huge because if you're sitting there at the table and that customer submits an application and it comes back, well, you got approved, but you only got approved for 3000 and the system's 12000 or 18000 that's not going to help anybody. So on our prime loan, the minimum approval amount is $25,000. You know, we can go up to 55000 based on that highest FICO. We've got a couple of bands. And even on the second loan, you know, they're going to get 24750 And for somebody that's got a little bit more challenged credit profile, A, if they get approved, and B, if they get approved for 24000 you might see them do a cartwheel. They're going to be super excited because they didn't even think they were going to get anything. And they were going to have to put in on a credit card paying 28%, but now they can get a loan that's extremely reasonable and fits their budget. 100%. And I think all of those things are extremely important to the contractor. The one that I will kind of allude to, and, and this has just been something we've been able to do because of our partnership, is when you're getting people approved for $25,000 or even up to fifty five dollars or whatever it is, a lot of the financing companies before, you had to put in exactly the job total. Well, what that prevents you from doing is getting people pre-approved. And so we have a system knowing that we need to condition the customer to utilizing financing. We have a text message that goes out to all of our, this is in the afternoon, it'll go out maybe in an hour or so to all the customers that have an, uh, an estimate scheduled for tomorrow. And it will say just what I've said. It will say the majority of our customers utilize financing options. If you'd like to cut out some time during your appointment tomorrow, feel free to fill out this application and get pre-approved. What that then does is it tags that job as pre-approved. The comfort advisor already knows that the customer is approved for so many dollars. And those jobs, if we can get them pre-approved and why we work so hard to get them pre-approved is one, makes the comfort advisor's job a heck of a lot easier because they know what they're working with. And it also allows us to convert a heck of a lot higher. If you've already been approved and you know that you need to do something, the chances of you moving forward with a job are pretty darn high. It's literally 93%, Chad. If somebody submits an app and gets approved, 93% of the time, they're going to give you the green light to move forward and that deal is going to close. That's huge. Yep. You know, we actually developed that for you guys. And now it, you know, it's a standard item for all kinds. You, you guys paved the way for that. And you know, we came out to Indiana and we, we sat down and we put together this API link and built it, you guys. And, and now we, we have the luxury of being able to do that for everybody. You guys paved the way for that. So thank you for being our guinea pig on that. Yeah. But it has been now, I mean, if I look at, Everybody in your company that's submitting apps, the highest one submitted, you know, is that all late approval. And you're using that wonderfully. And like you said, you can now go out to an appointment. And for some reason, if they fill it out and it doesn't get approved, you can call me and then we can figure out what do we need to do before you make that hour drive get out there to see if we can get them approved. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you think we're just, we've talked primarily about big ticket items, we offer pre-approval on every single service call. So if you book an appointment online, the last step is, well, if you'd like to get pre-approved, feel free to do so in about five seconds because they don't need a whole lot of information to fill it out and they'll get that approval. And it's just been extremely, extremely beneficial for our business. And I know it can be beneficial to tons of others out there. It's just a matter of being open to the idea. If you're going to grow your business, you're going to have to think outside the box. You know, my big quote I've been hanging on here lately is if you're not dreaming outside the box, you're not really dreaming at all. And I think the same thing goes with growing a company. If you're thinking of how we did business 10 years ago and that's how you're still operating, you're going to struggle to grow in today's environment with things changing as fast as they're changing. Yeah. And I would say not even struggle to grow, but struggle to survive. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Gail, I think that uh, as we come up kind of on time here, just some incredible information that I think people can act upon. We're going to put Gail and Goodleap, all their contact information in the show notes. So if you want to reach out to them and talk to them more, feel free to do so. Obviously, you can reach out to me if you need real life testimonial. I'll give it to you. But feel free to reach out to them, investigate it a little bit. Understand that a lot of it is not so much the product. There's a ton of people who offer financing. It is finding the right partner who you can grow with, and then really wrapping your mind around how do I present this to customers? I think that's the most important thing. So 
As we kind of finish out, Gail, would you like to leave the listeners with anything that you think is really important that you want to make sure that you get across? Yeah, just, you know, I'm excited. We're going to be doing some future podcasts with you. I've talked to my boss, our VP, Eric Howard, about coming on and doing one. I know that we've been strategizing about some other stuff. So there's a lot of good stuff ahead. This is a lot of great information, especially as we're going into a new year. People are looking at ways to kind of overcome some of the challenges that we all got hit with in 2023 and, and make 2024 really profitable and successful. So again, want to just very thankful and grateful for this partnership that we've had and, and all the success that we've had with that. And I think it'll be really cool to, to share that and hopefully have other people emulate it. So that to me is very exciting. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, as the podcast say, it says, you know, you can't stop the growth and with partners and tools that we're going to be hopefully, you know, really leaning into over 2024, we hope to provide a ton of just actionable things that you can do to grow your business, grow your top line, grow your gross margin, grow your bottom line, all of those things that in what everybody is predicting to be a tough year are going to help you move through it and move through it efficiently and effectively. And so as you think about growth, think about the people that you surround yourself with. I've got a group of amazing partners here that are going to help us. Good Leap is, as you've heard on this podcast, a huge part of our success and will continue to be into the future. But really excited about our growth journey that we're going to go on in 2024. 2023 has been tough. 2024 is going to be tough. And we're going to have to get really good at doing what we do. That's not a reason to contract. It's a reason to lean into growth and get better with what we have. You already have the leads. Now, how do we get more of them closed? How do we get more happy customers out there that can you know, spread the word and continue to grow our businesses? So, Gail, again, thank you so much for coming on. This has been fantastic. I know you said this was your first one. You did phenomenal at this. I'm sure that the listeners will, will think much the same. But listeners out there, a ton of great value to come in 2024. I'm excited about what we have here. And as always, never stop growing out there. Take care and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to get connected, you can find me at chadmpeterman.com. To see what our team's up to, you can visit petermanbros.com. As always, keep growing out there.